Okay, welcome to my first like a uh, screen recording how to video. Okay, today we're going to talk about beer and AI. Now, if you're a person who works in any type of technology job, I'm pretty sure you've been learning about AI, maybe specifically for your job. Um, maybe you're a software engineer or whatever engineer or some kind of technical field, but a lot of companies are introducing AI in general because they want their employees to learn about it, to, you know, AI is kind of, uh, and I'll talk about what that means in our context, is replacing literally Google searches. This is why, like, uh, Google is, you know, all about AI and investing a lot of money into it, uh, billions, as a matter of fact. All these companies are doing that because they know there's a lot of stakes uh, at stake, right? There's a lot of stake. So what we're, talk we're going to talk about is uh, AI and how you can uh, use it to, s if you never s s uh, used AI before, I'm going to teach you how to do it, but also like specifically how to uh, use it and talk with, interact with, with uh, through prompting, through asking questions about beer, researching recipes, how to ask it about, okay, uh, I'm specifically going to use my website. You, you, you land on my website, you see this one recipe for this one beer and you want to understand it better, like, what each grain type of grain is doing to the beer how can you make it better uh you know and, and generally just ask AI. i'm going to start doing this because you know uh, i've been learning about it the last six months for my job to refine my brews so you can do it to refine your brews as well i'm going to teach you about it okay so the first if you're using windows uh 10 or 11 microsoft pro you probably heard microsoft has something called copilot uh, over here so if you already have installed, you can use Copilot. I'm going to show you a few different ways of doing it. So with Copilot, there it is. You just start, you can ask, this is a prompt. You can ask questions about beer. Uh, so show me a uh, beer recipe for a great um, hazy IPA. And it tells you. Right, tells you everything, your grains, and blah, 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 blah. Tells you everything you want to know. So that's one way. And the nice thing about it is that un unlike a Google search where each query or each question you're asking it, it doesn't remember. Like each one is brand new, right? You ask a question or a query and, and Google. So, you know, you ask her something and it tells the answer. And the next and the next your next query, if you ask that, totally doesn't remember what what you asked prior. It doesn't take that into consideration. At least currently, it does. Maybe in the future they will do something like that. <coughs> Where right now, not so much. Okay. The the second one. Uh, so this is built into um, Windows. If you're not on Windows, thing I'm sure you've heard about Chat GTPT. So GTP, right? You can download this, install it, open AIs. They've been all over the news, big thing. Microsoft is investing billions into it and other companies billions. And Microsoft is at the same time is doing this because, you know, you can never trust Microsoft really with anything. Uh, if they can, they will. That's, that's the saying goes with them, right? So there's another one here. You can click on open AI, try G GTP, chat GTP, same thing. It's a type of a pr prompt thing. But the main thing to remember here is that... Uh, as you start conversations, it will remember what your, your first of all, it's going to know your first one. As you ask more questions deeper, it can refine it. Like if you don't like something, and it can be literally about any subject. So that's the beauty of it. Okay. The third one I'm going to uh, uh, introduce. So we're, we just talked about Copilot and ChatGPT. The next one we're going to talk about is something called Olama. Olama. So. Just go to Olama and download this for it's available for Mac, OS, Linux, or Windows. And it work, works literally the same way. So I've obviously downloaded this for Windows. Just download this, install it, will t it will t just follow the instructions, right? And um, I'm not going to go too deep into it because this is not a video about uh, AI, it's more about beer. But basically, once you have this installed, Llama, obviously, you will run it from a DOS prompt. There is a way to run it uh, through a GUI, but that uh, you have to install some, a few other things, and this is literally not 
what this video is going to be about. But basically, I've already installed the uh, installed the model, so we can list it. List. But so we have this one installed. But literally, like if you wanted to uh, start the model, you're gonna start the model. So you're gonna say oh llama, and then you're gonna say run. As you can see, this is these are all the commands you can do. So we're gonna run a model, and then we're gonna say the model of um, Meta of Facebook. Well, previously were called Facebook. Now they're called Meta. They released an open source model, and I think it's one of the better ones, the best ones out there. And uh, it's called Llama. They just re released one that's called 3.2. So we'll, uh, I've already installed it, but I'm just gonna use the command. The nice thing about it is, is that the command is the same way if you install it or not. If you were if you were to run this command first time, it will check to see if the model is, is downloaded and installed. If it's not, it will download and install it and every time it checks that. So now we already have it installed. And if there was some kind of a latest update, it would do that. But basically I'm just gonna start this up and this this is telling us that it's uh, you know game ready and, and the prompt is right right here. The prompt is the same thing as any of these prompts. It's just it's not as as beautiful, I guess, if, if I would say. Okay, so I'm gonna close this thing and that thing. Hopefully, this makes sense. And I'm going to uh, on my website on Kodak Brewing. I went and picked this uh, London Stout. I, I just randomly when I picked it. So these are the ingredients. I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna ask it a question. So I'm gonna say, please analyze the following beer ingredients for a stout. I'm not even gonna say it's a London stout, just a stout. And explain what each one does once I paste it. Literally, it, it's very, uh, you don't have to think about how you're asking questions. Be the beauty about these LLMs, large language models, is that you can talk to it like to a regular person. That they were trained for that. So you don't have to, as you can see, it's pretty fast. Uh, fast. It says, I'm ready when you are, right? So we're just gonna paste, I already, I think I pasted this, I copy it, and I'm gonna paste it, and I'm gonna go, boom. Let's break it down. It literally tells you each one what it is. Now, I believe that this recipe was for, let me go back, 10 gallon primary batch. Okay, so this is, these are the ingredients that you need for 10 gallons. And, you know, it tells you what it is. Two row pail, this malt is likely providing the base grain, which is true because it's the the base is going to be the majority of your grain build, the biggest weight, right? 18 pounds, that's true. 1.5 crystal, 60 crystal malt at sweetness. It tells you, like, if you're, if you're just learning about beer or you haven't brewed in a while or you just forgotten, I don't remember every single one, this will tell you what it is, the one pound chocolate malt. Now we're getting into the heart of the stout. The chocolate malt is adding a deep, rich flavor profile that's characteristic of many dark beers. It tells you what it is. One and a half pound roasted barley. The roasted barley is essentially caramel, caramelized grape that has been toasted to bring out the natural sugars and flavors in the recipe, adding an intense roasted flavor. So if you are, let's say you brew this beer and you think, uh, and you start drinking it, thinking about it, and it's too roasty, you might want to reduce this, right? So it's just, you know, and if you've been a brewer for a long time, you know that there's been software out there for a long time, a while, the last 10, 15 years before any of this AI, where you can put your ingredients in, you can put your yeast, you can put your hops, and you can simulate the brew, give you like, you know, what the ABV is going to be, what the color is going to be, the love of the of the beer, and many other things. Uh, but that's pretty much where majority of that it kind of ends. It doesn't go beyond that. Um, so now, okay, so we know, I know that this this was for a 10 gallon batch. So uh, please recommend the quantities for the grains pay instead for the grains uh, reference for a five gallon batch. Uh, 
and check it out. Based on when I told it, it uh, and keeps going and going. Now, the nice thing about this model is, so originally told 18 pounds to run, uh, Northwest Pale, right? And it says six to seven pounds of two row pale malt. And it tells you like, uh, this one, it didn't reduce it. But it tells you it's a reasonable for star recipe, no change needed. One pound chocolate milk, scale down ingredients, fit the smaller batch, so four or five ounces. It tells you. Okay, uh, what is the is the estimated ABV for a five gallon batch based on the ingredients posted? See, I, by the way, this is non-scripted. I've never done this before. I'm curious what it actually will say. It gives you a lot more information than that. Based on the total fermented sugar, 70 pounds, we estimate the ABV to around 9.6% to 10, 10, 10 and a quarter, right? It's literally, it will give you a range because it doesn't really know what kind of yeast um, we're using. If we if we tell a yeast, it will be able to uh, re-estimate it better. But it tells you all this information, like, it's beautiful. Like, and you don't have to be a data scientist or anything, an analyst, uh, engineer nothing you, you don't have to understand how to how to do programming code nothing you just literally interact with this thing uh, another thing I'm gonna show you guys is like see here where it says for help so anytime you don't remember just type type this we'll tell you the commands again right so you know you can load another model you can uh, show the model information let, let, let's do that uh, show the llama I never actually did this. Oh, I guess. Okay, I guess I don't know how to use that command. Um, you can exit by doing by. I, I did that before, so by. It exits the dust prompt and it unloads it from memory. I believe that's what it does, right? Um, you can still auto other models. Uh, there are bigger models. If you go in here, click here. There's the, the, you can install the previous uh, 3.1. They have different sizes too. So this is the, uh, the 3.2 latest, I believe, believe is the 1 billion model. Uh, and on a typical PC, even laptop, you, you can get away with running, I think the 1 billion, 3 billion. But anything beyond that, just so you know, uh, you need a pretty powerful workstation, not just a powerful workstation with a lot of memory, like lots of memory, like a minimum of 32, or I would say 64 gigs of RAM, but you need a really powerful graphics card because this runs on, on graphics cards, uh, parallel processing, that's how graphic cards are, that's how they are designed, they have thousands of cores and they, they can really quickly go through a, a specific tasks where as a CPU, as a general type of computing type of device that can do many different things. So, excuse me, that's something, uh, my cell phone. But this is the latest. You can go with the 3.1, the previous model. Now, I can already tell you that uh, the 8 billion will run fine on most computers. Uh, it didn't, like, you saw how the prompts were pretty fast. The 70 billion will not run on a typical computer unless you have a minimum of 64 gigs of RAM, like I said, and you have to have a powerful graphics card. Uh, I would say, like I tried on a NVIDIA 1080 tie and that was very slow, literally like it was a word, like I was typing it, it was very slow. So you, if you had a big response, this would take a few minutes. You, you have to have, I don't really know what, what kind of graphics card you have to have, a, pretty decent like a 10 1080 480 like a 500 dollar or a thousand dollar graph uh, graphics card like top of line gaming graphic card or maybe even graphics cards that don't have any uh actual monitor output they're actually 
they look like gra graphic cards, but they're used for, for processing alone, and you set them up to do the, the, the number crunching. You have to have something like that. 70 billion, like I said, you would have to have 64 gigs of RAM minimum and a pretty beefy computer. Like, I'm on a uh, HP Z8 G4, which is a very good machine, and I couldn't run this. I, I have a 1080 type uh, NVIDIA card, and it was very slow. I couldn't do it. I had to unload it. It's very resource intensive. It will load up and use up all your RAM and and just you have to have a very good CPU, everything. Don't even try the 70 billion, the 405 billion, don't, that's something you can run maybe in your dream. You have to have a, like a mainframe. Like I, I know people don't use the terms mainframes anymore, but we have to have a, like a, a very powerful workstation or a cluster of workstations, something like that. Don't, don't even go there. It, there's really no reason to go to the 70 billion or 100, 400, that's that's crazy billion. Uh, everything you could potentially ever want to ask is in the 8 billion. Now, now what? obviously this video is about beer brewing in my blog, but you can do this uh, to ask it any question about anything. If you're learning how to program, if you literally like anything you want to ask a person or anything you could potentially ask google you do in here and get a lot more details and uh, my dog just came up here so she's breathing and um so this uh, i guess the the limitation right now okay like i said i was just been learning about this the last few months is this is all text based as you can see it doesn't give any pretty images or anything like that there's many different models there is a way to get this in the gui you have to install a few different things but I am going to just end this video here. If you are interested in, and uh, in, like, you know, once you get going on this, I would suggest you go to YouTube and research how to run a llama models and GUIs. There's tons of people doing it. That's, that's what they specialize in. I don't. I'm not even going to try. Uh, they have a lot, um, you know, already have came out with great videos, a lot of them. So they will teach you how to do that and you can even attach information like you can attach if you had if you have data you can paste the data or depending on what kind of model you can attach it to a CSV file or point it somewhere and will literally look at your data, clean the data, tell you what it is. You can, you can do statistical analysis, you can do plots or at least if anything will tell you what the code is so you can post the code like in a statistical uh, program like R. Or maybe if you're if you're using Python, or if you're old school, you maybe using SAS. Or I, I stop using SAS because I don't think it makes any sense any, unless you work for a bank or the government. But uh, okay, so hopefully, like this is what I'm gonna start actually using to refine my recipes. So like when I I am in the process of actually um, refining my my hazy IPA that I just brewed and and so basically I brew it I, I already know what to expect right because we have s simulation software that will tell us what the outcome of the beer is by the ingredients but now it's like really fine-tuning it by taste uh, you know I, I drink it and I really think about it and I write it down R write it down is key because you know you drink too many beers you know, uh, if you don't write it down you're gonna forget you have to write down write it down not just go by memory that's that's a really bad idea and sorry that you guys can't see the whole screen because I'm, I'm actually, for security purposes, remotely logged into my uh, my Linux machine that where this thing runs on. I, I, I host my own website. This this is not coming off of a, like a hosting company or anything like that. Anyway, so um, I uh, I will write up a blog um, on here and then link it to this YouTube video that I'm recording right now. But with that, um, actually, this is my first video when I'm actually screen recording. I had to download the screen recording software and learn it. And I'm using a gaming microphone because I don't even have any type of fancy, you know, podcasting microphone with fancy schmancy whatever qualities of sound. I believe this was good enough for my first one. So we'll see how it goes. And I'm going to press the stop button and um, have a nice day.